for, they didn't want their image to go away of like this zen mom. well that's the thing is they've been like put it like if you look at pictures of them as a family they have them yeah. all at the, like the bernie sanders rally and they're all yeah. wearing their shirts little activist family yeah. basically yeah of adopted kids mm -hmm. and these this lesbian couple but it's starting to seem like there might be worse things going on that we know about Welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Going up on the Tuesday. So today we are going to be talking about a very interesting curse. The last time I even talked about a curse was when we did the Kennedy curse video, which was about a year ago. But this time we're going to be talking about King Tut. The story behind what happened to the people who found King Tut's tomb and excavated it is really, really fascinating. So King Tut lived from approximately 1341 BCE to 1323 BCE. He was the 12th pharaoh of the 18th Egyptian dynasty and had nine years in power approximately from 1332 to 13. 1323 BCE and King Tut actually only lived to be 19 years old Wow six years younger than me this actually wasn't like a young death though because the average life expectancy back then was only 32 it was really rare for people to even live past like 40 so very different than it is today so King Tut ended up marrying his half-sister so got a little incest thrown in there and it's really interesting King Tut is one of the more well-known pharaohs from Egypt but he actually didn't really do anything that spectacular. There are many other kings that have done way more than King Tut did during their ruling. The reason that King Tut ended up becoming really famous is because of how perfect he was when they found him. The condition of his tomb, it was just really, really all intact and they were able to get a lot of information from it. And it was such a famous and exciting discovery that that's really the name that sticks with people. King Tut was buried in the Valley of the Kings. In ancient Egyptian beliefs, the journey to the afterlife begins as the sun sets. Pharaoh takes the route of the sun as it passes down into the underworld. Armed with spells from the walls of the tomb, he faces many challenges, including a lake of fire and a giant serpent. Most Egyptians would then face the most rigorous test, to have their heart weighed against the feather of truth. Because he died unexpectedly at a young age, it is believed that he had a quick burial and was put in a smaller tomb that was likely built for someone who wasn't as important as he was. And 70 days after his death, he was laid to rest and his tomb was sealed. And what's really interesting is there was actually no records of King Tut after he died. So they really didn't know much about him until he was found. And it was extremely hard for them to find the entrance of his tomb because it was buried buried in a ton of debris. However, British archaeologist Howard Carter had began excavating in Egypt in 1891, and it wasn't until November 26th of 1922 when Carter and archaeologist George Herbert entered the interior chambers of the tomb. And they discovered that most of what was in the tomb was like completely fine, completely intact, and it took over 17 years for the team to excavate the tomb. This tomb was really big. It had four different rooms in it. They uncovered thousands of objects throughout the four rooms. Tons of painted murals on the wall that told the story of Tut's funeral. Many of these artworks show scenes from the important religious text, the Book of the Dead. Their primary objective was to ensure the safe passage of the Pharaoh from this life into the next. This was a major concern to Egyptians. When a pharaoh died, can we be sure the pharaoh is going to have a safe journey into the afterlife? All of the texts, all of the scenes in these tombs are designed to serve those simple functions. Oils, perfumes, jewelry, statues made of gold. This is the antechamber, looking exactly as it did when Howard Carter found it. Inside this chamber alone, Carter and other members of his excavation team found and recorded almost 700 objects. Magnificent throne of the king covered in gold from top to bottom. But when it finally came time to open King Tut's coffin, which was opened almost 3,000 years after he died, can you imagine the condition your body would be in after 3,000 years? But King Tut was in pretty good condition because of the way that they preserved him. They were masters of preserving the dead. It's incredible what the Egyptians were doing. When they finally opened his coffin, they in fact found another smaller coffin inside of it. And then when they lifted the lid on the second coffin, a third one 
one was underneath that. And this one was made entirely out of gold. And then on top of this third coffin, there was this l strange liquid that was poured on as liquid, but it hardened over it over the years. So it actually stuck the third coffin to the second coffin. And this thick residue had to be removed with hammering and high levels of heat. But when they raised the lid of the third coffin, they found King Tut in great condition. They've selected a spot on one of Tut's leg bones. There could be DNA in the marrow. So what about the curse? Well, it has been said that there is a curse on King Tut's tomb. People say that it is haunted, and anyone who participated in the excavation process of the tomb would be cursed. And the crazy thing is, is a lot of the people who worked on the tomb ended up dying in extremely weird events or getting sick or just freak accidents. The first one was George Herbert, and he was actually the person who financed the excavation of the tomb. He was considered to be the first victim of the curse because he accidentally tore open a mosquito bite while shaving and got blood poisoning. Now that is really unlucky and unfortunate, and I didn't even know that could happen. And this occurred only months after the tomb was open. Then there was Bruce Ingham. Howard Carter, who was the archaeologist that discovered the tomb, gave a paperweight to his friend Ingham as a gift. And the gift was a mummified hand wearing a bracelet that was supposedly inscribed with the phrase, curse be he who moves my body. And then Ingham's house burned to the ground. And while he was trying to rebuild it, it was hit with a giant flood. Then there's George J. Gold. Gold was a wealthy American financer and railroad executive who visited the tomb in 1923, and he got sick almost immediately afterwards. And he had never recovered from it, and he died of pneumonia a few months later. Now what's really interesting is there could have been mold spores in the tomb. There are scientists who say that it's possible that they were even purposely put there by the Egyptians for whoever opened it, they would release these spores that apparently can last for thousands of years and live through that, and then that made them sick. But then most of the deaths here aren't from sickness at all. Aubrey Herbert, he was the half-brother to George Herbert. Although Aubrey never visited the tomb, it was thought that because he was related to George, he also got cursed. He was actually born with a degenerative eye disease, and in his late life, he became totally blind. A doctor suggested that his rotten teeth may be causing his eye problems, his lack of vision, so they recommended him removing all of his teeth, and he got every single tooth removed from his head, and it still didn't even help him. It ended up making it worse, he ended up getting sepsis, and died a few months later. Then there's Evelyn White. Evelyn was a British archaeologist who visited Tut's tomb and probably helped excavate the site. After seeing a bunch of his co-workers die as a result of opening the tomb, he got really freaked out and ended up killing himself. And allegedly, he wrote a note in his own blood saying that, I have succumbed to a curse which forces me to disappear. Then there's Aaron Ember, who died in 1926 when his house in Baltimore burned down less than an hour after he and his wife hosted a dinner party. The crazy thing is he could have exited safely, but his wife told him to save a manuscript that he had been working on, and they ran out of time, and all of them, including his kids, wife, and maid, died. The name of the manuscript? The Egyptian Book of the Dead. Then there was Richard Bethel. He was the second person to enter the tomb. He died in 1929. He was actually found in his room at an elite general Gentlemen's Club in London smothered. There were also a bunch of fires at his house, which is where he kept a ton of artifacts. Then there was Douglas Reed. He actually wasn't a part of the excavation team, but he was a radiologist that x-rayed King Tut before the mummy was given to the museum. He got sick the next day and died three days later. James Henry Breasted. Breasted was one of the excavators who worked on the scene, and when he went home, he found out that his pet canary had been eaten by a cobra, which is creepy because the cobra is a symbol of protection in ancient Egypt. He ended up not dying until 1935, but he died very quickly after he had gotten back from a trip to Egypt. And then there's Howard Carter. 
murder. The guy who discovered the two. And he actually never experienced any bad luck, any crazy illness, or any unfortunate event, or his house burning down. He died at 64, which is relatively normal from lymphoma. His tombstone says, may your spirit live, may you spend millions of years, you who love Phoebus, sitting with your face to the north wind, your eyes beholding happiness. And people think that the pharaohs actually spared him of the curse. I don't know, do you guys think this is a curse? Do you think it's a bunch of strange coincidences? Tell me in the comments. I thought this was such a fascinating story and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos on ancient Egypt because it's one of my favorite topics and I'd be happy to do so. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time.